Good afternoon, dear students. Last time we started new lesson that is analytical chemistry, in which we have learned that analysis can be done in two ways that is quantitative and qualitative analysis. Now we will not do quantitative analysis here, we will do qualitative analysis in which we will determine the will identify the unknown substance. So, there I said you alkali metals, uh, alkalis can be used for identifying the unknown substances, especially sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and ammonium hydroxide. So, today we will be identifying the metal from their salt, metal ion from their salt. So when sodium hydroxide solution is added drop by drop, so first of all what to do? Action of sodium hydroxide solution on certain salt solutions. So we will add sodium hydroxide solution on certain salt solutions, then what will happen? So what will happen? Salt solution plus alkali gives metal hydroxide, generally insoluble metal hydroxide. What type of metal hydroxide? Insoluble metal hydroxide. Precipitates. Precipitate. What do you, what do you mean by precipitate? Insoluble substance. So we'll see insoluble metal hydroxide. Then we will get salt formed in solution and the color of precipitate and its solubility in excess of alkali. So some of the metal metallic hydroxide precipitated metallic hydroxide dissolves in excess of alkali to give soluble compounds. So uh, we will do now when Sodium hydroxide solution is added drop by drop to the solution of metallic salts. Metal hydroxide formed gets precipitated. So when we add, when we add this alkali drop by drop in this salt solution, the metallic metal hydroxide which is formed will get precipitated. Will get precipitated. And then we can identify metal ion from this. We can identify the metal ion present in this precipitated metal hydroxide. So metal hydroxide OH, then metal, whatever metal ion is there that can be known by the color that it gives. So first of all, now in our syllabus what, what are the Metals we have to identify is calcium, then iron from iron, ferrous salts also as well as ferric salts. Ferrous means valency 2, Fe2 plus. Ferric means Fe3 plus. Then copper salts, Cu2 plus ion, not Cu plus ion, Cu2 plus ion only. Then zinc salts, Zn2 plus ion. Then lead sulfate, Pb2 plus ion. Then number six in your book is ammonium salt. So ammonium salt generally we'll see how ammonium salt reacts with alkali. That also we'll see. Now let's go in detail with this. So what happens with calcium nitrate? One solution. One salt solution given to you is calcium nitrate. Salt solution given to you is calcium nitrate. For example, you do not know what is there. Okay? But then also, first of all, we will go from known to unknown. We will go from known to unknown. So, if there is any calcium salt, if there is any calcium salt given to you, if there is any calcium salt solution given to you, then then if you add sodium hydroxide drop by drop, drop by drop, then what we will get? We will get calcium hydroxide. What we will get?
calcium hydroxide and since calcium salt here is calcium nitrate calcium salt here is calcium nitrate so calcium is replacing sodium so calcium combines with OH and then we get calcium hydroxide and this is insoluble in water this is insoluble in water so we will get calcium hydroxide precipitate we will get calcium hydroxide precipitate and what is the color of this calcium hydroxide precipitate it is white PPT white PPT plus salt formed in solution what salt we will get now sodium will be replacing calcium that means sodium will be combining with nitrate so what we will get NaNO3 valency of sodium 1 valency of nitrate also 1 so NaNO3 NaNO3 now let's balance this so it is balanced okay now what about, what about the color of this last class we learned that group 1 group 2 group 13 14 15 16 17 all the metal salts are all the metals are all the metal ions are colorless and nitrate is also colorless so colorless and colorless and this salt also will be color this salt will be colorless this is colorless now here Whenever, whatever calcium salts we are getting, if we add uh, sodium hydroxide drop by drop, then we will get calcium hydroxide. If it is calcium nitrate, then also we will get calcium hydroxide. If it is calcium sulfate, then also we will get calcium hydroxide. Whatever the salt of calcium you react with sodium hydroxide. Whatever calcium salt you get, if you add uh, the sodium hydroxide drop by drop, you will get calcium hydroxide. And how to know calcium hydroxide is formed when you get white precipitate, white insoluble substance. When you get white insoluble substance at the bottom, then you can be sure that it is calcium hydroxide. It is calcium hydroxide. Now hydroxide is colorless, so calcium, so we can come to know that okay, calcium ion is present in this particular salt calcium ion is present in this particular salt if it is not told to you that it is calcium salt then also you will come to know that calcium ion is present in this particular salt so how to know that calcium ion is present in the salt by seeing white precipitate and then another salt if it is nitrate then we will get sodium nitrate if, there is, if this is sulfate calcium sulfate we will get sodium sulfate so like this then what is the color of ppt then what is the color of ppt color of ppt is white white ppt white ppt then if we add excess of alkali then what will happen then it will be uh, sparingly soluble sparingly Soluble, sparingly soluble means it is soluble but a very very less amount slightly soluble sparingly soluble means slightly soluble so white ppt and with excess of alkali it is sparingly soluble it is sparingly soluble okay so this is all about calcium salt so how calcium salt reacts with how calcium salt reacts with sodium hydroxide when calcium salt reacts with sodium hydroxide we get calcium hydroxide insoluble substance white present the color of the precipitate is white and uh, what happens to its solubility if we add a lot of alkali it is a sparingly soluble Sparingly soluble. Now we will see with the iron. Iron, ferrous salts. Iron, ferrous salts. 
Fe2 plus ion. So, for example, we are taking ferrous sulfate. What we are taking? Ferrous sulfate. So, when ferrous sulfate reacts with sodium hydroxide, then what will happen? Then we will get FeOH whole twice. Fe will be combining with OH because Na will be replacing Fe. All these reactions are double decomposition reaction. All these reactions are double decomposition reaction or precipitation reaction because we are getting precipitate. We are getting precipitate. So double displacement why? Because this is replaced by sodium and sodium and the sodium is replaced. Sodium is uh, replaced by iron and iron is replaced by sodium. There is, there is exchange of ions taking place. So this is double decomposition reaction or double displacement reaction. So we get iron hydroxide, ferrous hydroxide, ferrous hydroxide plus plus. Now SO4 and Na. So what we get? Na. Na what is the valency? Plus 1. And SO4? Valency is minus 2. Now please cross what we get. We get we get Na2SO4. We get Na2SO4. And then here iron. Iron is colored ion. Iron is colored ion. Why? You must be thinking why this is white precipitate. Because we know that calcium lies in group 2 and uh, it can form colorless ion. It can form colorless ion. So white primitive. Here iron is colored ion. Iron is colored ion. Last class we learned. Iron is colored ion. So what color iron Fe2 plus can have? It can have dirty green color. What color iron this Fe2 plus especially ferrous ion can have dirty green color and OH is colorless. So this is dirty green Dotty green gelatinous PPT. Dotty green gelatinous PPT. So we will get dotty green gelatinous PPT. So whenever we are adding sodium hydroxide solution in a particular in a given salt and we happen to get dotty green gelatinous PPT. Dirty green gelatinous insoluble substance, then we can be sure that the salt contains ferrous ion. So, if if a salt solution is given to you and sodium hydroxide solution is given to you, so they have said you that okay, whatever metal ion is present in the salt given to you, you find it out. Then what you will be doing is you will be adding sodium hydroxide solution slowly, drop by drop in the solution, in the unknown solution given to you and if you happen to get dotted green gelatinous PPT then you can be sure that the ion present in the particular unknown salt solution is ferrous ion. Which ion? Ferrous ion. Okay. So you will get dirty green gelatinous PPT and another another salt you will get in sodium sulfate. What you will get? Sodium sulfate. So sodium sulfate. Sodium is colorless, sulfate is also colorless. So you will get here colorless. So salt formed in solution is sodium sulfate and this is this is saturating at the bottom in the form of insoluble substance. And what happened if you add, uh, what is the color then, what color we got here? Dirty green, dirty green gelatinous, dirty green gelatinous PPT. And if you add excess of alkali, what will happen? If you, excess, if you add excess of alkali, then also it remains insoluble. It remains insoluble. With the excess of sodium hydroxide also it remains insoluble. Okay. Now, now, ferric salts, Fe3 plus, ferric salts, Fe3 plus IO. Now, say for example, one uh, unknown salt solution is given to you 
and then you have to find uh, what terminal ion is present in this particular salt solution and sodium hydroxide solution is given to you. So slowly you will be adding so, uh, this one sodium hydroxide solution and then if you happen to get if you happen to get reddish brown insoluble substance if you happen to get reddish brown insoluble substance reddish brown insoluble substance on adding sodium hydroxide solution on the given salt solution you can be sure that the metal ion present in the unknown salt solution is ferric ion ferric ion so what is the color of ferric ion reddish brown what is the color of ferric ion reddish brown what is the color of ferrous ion dirty green so what, are we, what you will be getting here you will be getting fe fe then fe valency is 3 fe valency is 3 and oh valency is minus 1 oh valency is minus 1 now crisscross crisscross what you will be getting fe oh whole thrice what you will be getting fe oh whole thrice so you will be getting FeOH whole twice. FeOH whole twice. And this is insoluble substance. So, what is the color of this? What is the color of this? This is reddish brown. PPT, you will get reddish brown insoluble substance. You will get reddish brown insoluble substance. Along with this, what you will get? Along with this, what you will get? Your Fe and OH. Gone. Now, what is left? An A and Cl. So, you will be getting sodium. Sodium chloride. You will be getting sodium chloride. What are you getting? Sodium chloride. Okay. So, Sodium chloride you will be getting and you know that sodium is colorless and chloride ion is also colorless. As a result, this is also colorless. This is colorless. Colorless. Okay. Here, ferric chloride color is yellow. Ferric chloride color is yellow. And ferric hydroxide color is reddish brown precipitate. But here it is soluble. Here it is insoluble. Insoluble substance you will be getting. Ferrous sulfate is pale green but ferrous hydroxide is dirty green. So you need to know about the colors. So very easy. Calcium colorless or white. Ferrous ion dirty green. Ferrous hydroxide. What is the color of ferrous hydroxide? Dirty green. Gelatinous PPT. Then ferric hydroxide, what is the color? Reddish brown PPT. What is the color of ferric hydroxide? Reddish brown PPT. And then, okay, here, what is the color of PPT? Color of PPT is reddish, reddish brown. Reddish brown color. And with excess of alkali, it remains insoluble. With excess of Alkali also it remains insoluble. It remains insoluble. Okay. Now let's see about this one. Copper salts. Let's see copper salts. Copper salts. Cu2 plus IO. So what is the color of copper? Cupric ion, CO2 plus ion. Last time we learned what is the color? Blue. Whatever blue color, whatever blue color salt you see, copper ion is present in that. And which copper ion? It is cupric ion, CO2 plus. So CO2 plus means blue color. So copper sulfate solution is blue in color. Copper sulfate solution is blue in color. Now when this copper sulfate solution is uh, added with sodium hydroxide solution then what we will be getting we will be getting the Cu then OH so what is the valency of Cu2 here 2 plus and valency of OH is minus 1 that means what compound we are going to get CuOH whole twice 
and all these hydroxides are insoluble hydroxides. While teaching base also I have said you there are few water soluble bases they are sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, then ammonium hydroxide and then calcium hydroxide which is sparingly soluble which is slightly soluble in water. Rest of all the hydroxides are insoluble in water in the well teaching base only I've seen you. So that only we are using here. And some of the hydroxides are soluble, uh, so, so colorless and some of the hydroxides are colored, colored. So with that only we can be able to identify the metal ion because last time last class we learned the color of metal ion. So copper hydroxide copper hydroxide and this is also insoluble so what kind of ppt will get here what kind of precipitate will get here will get pale blue pale blue pale blue ppt so whenever you will be adding whenever you will be adding the sodium hydroxide to a given to given blue color solution and you happen to get insoluble pale blue substance then you can be sure that the solid contains copper ion. Copper ion. Okay, then what is the next salt we are getting? Sodium and sulfate. So what will be getting? We will be getting sodium sulfate. We will be getting sodium sulfate. Okay, then what is the color? What color we are getting here? We are getting here pale blue. What color we are getting here? Pale blue. Okay. Now, what happens if we add excess of copper? If we add excess of sodium hydroxide? What will happen if we add excess of sodium hydroxide in a copper sulfate solution? Then nothing. It will be still insoluble. It will be still insoluble. It will be still insoluble with the excess of sodium hydroxide also precipitate. This, uh, this precipitate will remain insoluble. Now we will go for zinc salts. We will go for zinc salts. Zn2 plus. And we know that zinc ion is colorless ion though it lies in transition metals though it lies in the period between 3 to 12 but then also zinc and lead are colorless ions colorless ions okay so zinc sulfate zinc colorless ion sulfate colorless ion as a result the salt is also colorless then sodium colorless hydroxide colorless as a result colorless but when these two reacts when we add Sodium hydroxide drop by drop, then what will be getting? We'll be getting zinc. We'll be getting zinc hydroxide. We'll be getting zinc hydroxide. Zinc hydroxide. And this is precipitate. Zinc hydroxide. It precipitates. And what is the color of this precipitate? White gelatinous. White, since it is colorless, white. Gelatinous PPT white gelatinous means here you will be getting white PPT only. Gelatinous means it will be somewhat signing, signing when you rub pencil lead on the disc. Then if you if you happen to put the finger on that, then you can see that some sparks, some signing will be there. So that is gelatinous. So you will get white gelatinous PPT. If you happen to get white PPT, it can be calcium. But if you happen to get white gelatinous PPT, it will be zinc. It will be zinc. Okay. But when you happen to get dotted in gelatinous PPT, then it is ferrous ion. So zinc hydroxide is white gelatinous PPT. Now, plus what is the next you are getting? Sodium sulfate. So you are getting sodium. Sulfate. So what can be the color of sodium sulfate? It is colorless. It is colorless. So this is also colorless. Sodium sulfate is colorless. 
Okay. Now, here, what is the color you are getting here? White, white gelatinous, gelatinous, white gelatinous, you get. And with the excess of sodium hydroxide, what will happen to this zinc hydroxide? What will happen to this zinc hydroxide if you add excess of sodium hydroxide? So if you have if you happen to add sodium hydroxide, excess of sodium hydroxide, then what you get is what you get is this one zinc hydroxide, zinc hydroxide plus excess NaOH, excess of NaOH, excess NaOH in excess, excess. Then you will be getting. Na2ZnO2 Na2ZnO2 plus water what do you get? Na2ZnO2 plus two molecules of water now we know what is Na2ZnO2 it is sodium zincate what it is? sodium zincate so you will get soluble and this is soluble sodium zincate is soluble in water this is soluble Sodium zincate is soluble in water. That means with the excess of alkali, this is soluble. With excess of alkali, zinc hydroxide is soluble. And the initial stage of this only I said you some of the precipitated metallic hydroxides are soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide solution to give soluble compound. So this is soluble. If you add excess of sodium hydroxide, zinc hydroxide is soluble and it gives sodium zincate. It gives sodium zincate. It gives sodium zincate, which is soluble in water. Which is soluble in water. That means whatever we are doing here, calcium hydroxide is sparingly soluble. Then so uh, this iron hydroxide, ferrous hydroxide is insoluble, ferric hydroxide is also insoluble, copper hydroxide is also insoluble, but zinc hydroxide with excess of sodium hydroxide is soluble in water. Okay. So that means you should not, if you really want to get, if you really want to know about zinc hydroxide, then first of all, that's why we go on adding drop by drop, drop by drop. So that first of all we will get white gelatinous PPT and if this white gelatinous PPT on further addition of sodium hydroxide disappears, it will remain soluble, then you can be sure that it is zinc iron. It is zinc iron. Okay. Now we will be going with this one lead now. Lead sulfate PB2 plus ion. Lead nitrate is colorless because lead is colorless, nitrate is also colorless, and sodium hydroxide is also colorless. So, what are the things we are going to get? Lead valency plus 2, where is valency minus 1. So, we will be getting PBOH whole twice. PBOH whole twice. And this is this is precipitate. So, it is it gives white PPT. It gives white PPT. It gives white PPT. White PPT it gives. Okay. Then what is the next you are going to get with this? You are going, going to get sodium nitrate. NaNO3. You are going to get sodium nitrate which is also colorless. Color less okay this is sodium nitrate you are going to get colorless so white ppt and you must be thinking okay with calcium hydroxide also it is white ppt and with lead hydroxide also it is white ppt so how to know how to know which is calcium ion and which is lead ion so what you can do is for identifying this calcium ion and lead ion you go on adding sodium hydroxide drop by drop then this is slightly soluble, not completely soluble. Calcium hydroxide is slightly soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide solution, but this is completely soluble. This is completely soluble. If you happen to get completely soluble substance, completely soluble solution, 
then it is lead ion. If you happen to get sparingly, slightly soluble, then NaOH in excess. Then what will happen? Lead hydroxide plus NaOH in excess. So what do you get? You get Na2, Na2, then PbO2, Na2, PbO2. So what is this? This is sodium plumbate. This is sodium plumbate. Sodium plumbate. What is this? Sodium plumbate. You will get soluble substance. This is soluble. This is soluble substance. Sodium plumbate plus water. Sodium plumbate plus water. You will get sodium plumbate plus water. And that means with excess of sodium hydroxide, this lead hydroxide is also soluble. Lead hydroxide is also soluble. With excess of sodium hydroxide, lead hydroxide is also soluble. Now let's uh, do recap again. So whenever the salt solution given to you is uh, turning into white PPT. Turning into white PPT with excess of alkali, if it is sparingly soluble, then there is calcium ion. What is the identification of ferrous hydroxide? It is dotted green gelatinous PPT. If you get then it is ferrous hydroxide. If you happen to get reddish brown PPT, then this is ferric hydroxide. If you happen to get pale blue PPT, then it is copper hydroxide. If you happen to get white gelatinous PPT, then it is zinc hydroxide. If you happen to get, if you happen to get uh, this one, white PPT, then it is lead hydroxide, which on further adding with the addition of sodium hydroxide completely remains soluble. That means you cannot see PPG further. Because what is formed? Sodium plumbite is formed, which is soluble in water. Now, now uh, last one is this one ammonium chloride, ammonium salt, ammonium salt, NH4 plus ion. I will not be doing this because again I have to do for sodium hydroxide, this one uh, ammonium hydroxide also. So I will be telling you verbally. So ammonium salt, what is the formula for ammonium ion? NH4 plus. So when this ammonium salt, any ammonium salt, ammonium chloride, ammonium sulfate, any salt plus sodium hydroxide when you go on adding drop by drop sodium hydroxide in ammonium salt then you will be getting sodium salt plus water plus a gas will be released white dense fume or gas with white dense fume will be released that is ammonia gas so how to identify the particular salt is ammonium salt how to identify Ammonium ion in the particular salt, then it is it is by adding sodium hydroxide solution you will get in ammonia gas. That means what is the identification for this ammonium salt? It is ammonia gas. Ammonia gas will be released. And how to know ammonia gas? It is suffocating white dense fumed gas. Suffocating white dense gas. Okay, white dense gas. Okay. Now, we will be doing this one, uh, this identification of metal ions from their salt solution by using ammonium hydroxide solution, by using ammonium hydroxide solution and ammonium hydroxide solution is also alkali because it is water soluble base. So some precipitate are soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide solution as like that of sodium hydroxide solution because of the formation of soluble amino compounds because of the formation of soluble amino compounds so in case of sodium hydroxide solution because of the formation of sodium hydroxide soluble sodium hydroxide solutions so they are soluble all sodium hydroxide all sodium salts are soluble so all ammonium salts are not soluble but then some amino compounds are soluble and then with the formation of these soluble amino compounds this uh, precipitated metallic hydroxide becomes converts to soluble compounds with excess of sodium hydroxide 
And let's see, let's check for all these with sodium ammonium hydroxide solution. Okay. Let's see for first for calcium salts. Calcium salts. So no precipitation occurs. No precipitation occurs. No precipitation occurs. No precipitation occurs. If you are provided with a salt solution, if you are provided with a salt solution and you are going on adding sodium hydroxide and going on adding sodium hydroxide solution in the excess you add it but then also if you do not get any precipitate then it must be calcium ion. It must be calcium ion. That means with calcium salts no precipitation of course even in excess even in excess of ammonium hydroxide no precipitation occurs even in excess no ppt no precipitation occurs even in excess of ammonium hydroxide then there can be calcium ion there can be calcium ion and what must be the reason for no formation of precipitate when calcium salts are 